So here we're in the Imer 644, just trying to, just bought it uh, not very long ago, so we're just trying to get things squared up. Now I'm going to replace this dash, this carpet's a bit uh, done, and the plywood underneath is in a bit, a bit of a state over the years, it's just had condensation and all sorts of water on it and it's uh, a bit mouldy underneath, so we're going to try and clear it out. A wee bit cramped under here so I'm bending down to try and get my face into frame but this is uh, going to be replaced and I'm going to just go through it I'm just going to film it as I'm going I've never done this before so I'll be learning as I go and hopefully you'll be able to take something away from this video as well maybe tackle something similar yourself so this is a, a 1990 Heimer 644 27 years old coming up for 28 so it's quite old as you can see from the, the dash it's, it's, it's not got any sort of modern technology but it still goes and we are going to try and do some trips in this but it's not had much done in the last few years I don't think so it's got a wee bit of catching up to do so we've got a wee bit of work to get this squared up so I'm going to get stuck in and you can just see what I'm doing basically and uh, see if you uh, if it helps you at all. So the first thing to do is get rid of the speakers. some screws through the carpet and take them off. Now this should come up and it's not glued down very well. It's been screwed down. Okay, so you can see this uh, old bit of ply. This old bit of ply is pretty badly damaged. You can see there, it's had a bit of wet and actually it's still wet, which needs investigated. And you can see in the, in the middle here, another wet piece. Now, this is actually soaking wet underneath here in the engine bay, and I'm not exactly sure how the water is getting to this point here um, but I'm assuming it's coming from or soaking along the uh, soundproofing that's underneath here so basically this side is absolutely minging with I don't know what that looks like some sort of mould but yeah it's coming out so what I'm going to do now is release this vent system and at least this whole thing right round I think it's just held on with these wee screws here and that should let us pick this up it looks like it's been out before at some point um, so shouldn't be too bad but that's the reason why this is going it's just it's done really it looks like it's been in for a while this is the old carpet underneath so it's had at least one replacement of the carpet um, and we are going to hopefully replace it with something, something a bit different. Okay, this is what it looks like with the, the dash out. I've not cleaned it up yet, it's still a mess. Um, but in there you can see, everything's there. So, just try to get the old screws out. All the old screws have got to go. Oh.
completely gone, rusted solid. And this is where the water was dripping onto the engine down there from this point here. So obviously the water's been probably running along from there maybe. This is a wee gap in the in the seal. No, I don't think that's anything serious, but there is definitely air coming in there. So and this has been put on to sort of cover it up a wee bit. So I'm thinking this is where um, the water's been coming in, but looking along here it looks pretty wet as well. It looks soaking. Right, what I'm going to do is get all this cleaned up. I'm going to use that thing out there as a template. What's left of it. Try and make a, a decent template out of that. And then I'll cut it and we'll get it put back in again. Now this stuff is completely completely rotten. So not, not much left of it. It's hard in places. And flaky, but this here, this is interesting. This looks to me like a squirrel attack. Those are wee claw marks. If you can see that, right? Because this is so rotten. It's difficult to use this as a template, but it'll give me a rough idea. I just have to extend this out a wee bit here, because um, some of it's missing. But that looks like the line there, and then we lose it between there and there. I should be able to get some sort of decent line on that. I'm going to mark it up. where the vents are going, so I've put the vents back on temporarily, they're really loose and just and I've marked up a line round um want to put the holes for these in so these can sit in the plywood in the new plywood in a place where they'll hopefully spread air onto the windscreen. So you want to get these right in this point here in this sort of bigger area. Um, yeah, so you've got room basically to have them sitting in there. So I'm just going to. I've marked up the outer line. Now I just need to measure. Um, the width of this. See how much room I've got in here. It looks like it's 16 millimeters and 30 on that side. There's not much room in there, I mean you can get it in, but just be careful. At least that side, so I'm going to make it close to this, close to the outer side, closer. Nice to sit like that. You actually have to cut that, that hole there, an ellipse. So yeah, you actually have to cut that out of this. Get as much varnish as you can onto the edges. The edges are important. And I might even put a wee bit of silicon seal along here once I'm finished. So that's the 
first layer on. It's not very pretty. Lots of bits on there. Just to basically get rid of that first covering. And then I'm going to put in the second layer on top of that. The first piece that we cut. to hold this in position um, and I've used stainless steel uh, pan head screws with stainless steel washers um, I've only used 10 on it hopefully that's enough it's just to stop it all sagging if the uh, adhesive doesn't, doesn't stay um, if the adhesive is not enough to, to hold it while it's hanging underneath the dashboard trimming on this back edge apart from that the front edge fits like a glove I just need to do this wee back edge to take into account that ledge there 10, 20 mil off quite a lot of that definitely on this side is not so good yep that's good 